Hello and welcome everyone. In this video, I have provided solutions to recently conducted MUHS Winter 2023 Paper 1 Brief Answer Question. So let's see the first question. First question is enumerate any four types of vaccines with one example each. Let's see the answer to this question. So there are various types of vaccine. First type of vaccine is whole microorganism vaccine. In this type of vaccine, a complete organism is used as a vaccine. So here, microorganism loses its pathogenicity, but it has ability to elicit the immune response. There are two subtypes of this type of vaccine. First one is live attenuated vaccine. Here, microorganism is attenuated or weakened by prolonged culture in artificial medium. Now, the example of this type of vaccines are BCG vaccine, which is used for prevention of tuberculosis, cholera vaccine, measles vaccine, mumps vaccine, rubella vaccines, chickenpox, rotavirus, and yellow fever vaccine. Second subtype of whole microorganism vaccine is inactivated or killed vaccine. Here, the microorganism is inactivated or killed by using chemical method, mostly formaldehyde or alkylating agents are used. Example of this type of vaccine are anthrax vaccine, typhoid vaccine, plague vaccine, hepatitis A, influenza and rabies vaccine. Second type of vaccine is subunit vaccine. It is also called as purified macromolecule vaccine. In this type of vaccine, not a complete organism, but only a part of a part of microorganism is used. For example, first subtype is using toxoids. So some bacteria releases toxins that elicit the pathological response or pathological disease. So these toxins are inactivated and they are converted to toxoid. They are called as toxoids. So what are the types? What are the example of toxoids vaccine? Diphtheria, pertussis and tetanus, DPT vaccine. So it is a toxoid vaccine. Second subtype is capsular polysaccharide. Now this is a bacteria that is streptococcus pneumoniae and a capsular polysaccharide is present around this bacteria. And this capsular polysaccharide has antigenic property. So this capsular polysaccharide is used in a vaccine. So this is used for prevention of pneumococcal pneumonia. Third type is recombinant antigens. So here molecule of the bacteria or viruses is extracted and large amount of this antigen is made by using recombinant DNA technology. So large amount of this antigen is there, for example, in hepatitis B vaccine. So hepatitis B virus has surface antigen. So the large amount of this surface antigen is produced by recombinant DNA technology and it is used as hepatitis B vaccine. Third type of vaccine is mRNA vaccine. Now mRNA vaccines, in mRNA vaccine, mRNA is itself inserted into the host and it produces a specific antigen or antigenic protein and body produces antibodies against that antigen. Okay, so this mRNA vaccine, it elicits both humoral and cell mediated immunity. For example, in the prevention of COVID-19, a, COVID, a vaccine was made which was, based, which was based on mRNA. Similarly, there is DNA vaccine. So in DNA vaccine, the gene itself is incorporated into the host. So there is DNA to RNA to protein. So particular antigenic protein is made, is produced in the body and antibodies against this antigen are made. Okay. In case of DNA vaccine, the human trials are underway. Examples of DNA vaccine is malaria vaccine and HIV vaccine. Okay. So these are the various types of vaccine. Now how to remember? There are some mnemonics, for example, live attenuated vaccine. First mnemonic is TC, MMR, CRY. So TC, so T for tuberculosis, C for cholera. So ticket checker that is there in trains. So TC that is tuberculosis, cholera, MMR that is measles, mumps, rubella and CRY, chickenpox, rotavirus and yellow fever vaccine. 
second mnemonic for inactivated or kill vaccine is atp here that is anthrax typhoid plague hepatitis a influenza and rabies vaccine and for toxoid vaccines so this is very common that is dpt diphtheria pertussis tetanus so you see these are also important for mcq so there can be the mcq on these examples and these examples are under which type of vaccine okay so let's see the second question what is leptin mention its role in regulation of appetite so first see what is leptin it is a peptide hormone produced by adipocytes in adipose tissue. So, there are various adipokines produced in the adipose tissue and one of the adipokines is leptin. What is its role in regulation of appetite? It is released when adipose tissue are full of triacylglycerol. So, when adipose tissue are full of triacylglycerol, it is released. And what is the role, what it does? It carries message to hypothalamus, mainly the arcuate nucleus of hypothalamus, which is involved in regulation of appetite. So, it carries message to hypothalamus that fat reserves are sufficient and it promotes reduction of fuel intake, that is decrease of the appetite and it increases the expenditure of energy. Now, how it is being done? It increases the release of appetite suppressing hormone which is melanocyte stimulating hormone and inhibit, it, and inhibit release of neuropeptide Y which is an appetite stimulating hormone. Okay, so increases release of MSH and inhibit release of neuropeptide Y. Okay, so this is the role of leptin in regulation of appetite. Let's see the next question. State how the glucokinase and phosphofructokinase reactions are bypassed in gluconeogenesis. This is a star question, a repeated topic in winter 2022 paper. Question asked was enumerate four enzymes catalyzing irreversible steps of gluconeogenesis. So it was a straightforward question. You have to write four enzymes for two marks. Here they have asked how these two reactions are bypassed. So while answering this, I have given both the pathways together so that, so that it is easy to interpret the, how these two reactions are bypassed. So in glycolysis, glucose is converted to glucose 6-phosphate with the help of glucokinase enzyme and this is an irreversible reaction. So how it is bypassed in gluconeogenesis? using glucose 6-phosphatase that converts glucose 6-phosphate to glucose. Next reaction is common that is reaction where glucose 6-phosphate is converted to fructose 6-phosphate. It is converted to fructose 1,6-bisphosphate by using phosphofructokinase in glycolysis. How it is bypassing gluconeogenesis? By using fructose 1,6-bisphosphatase which converts fructose 1,6-bisphosphate to fructose 6 phosphate okay so rather than writing the answer it is always better to write the pathways and the, and the pathway itself explain your answer okay so how they are bypass two step using these two enzymes that is glucose 6 phosphatase and fructose 1 6 bisphosphatase okay let's see the succeeding question with respect to oxidative phosphorylation, explain why the PO ratio of NADH and FADH2 is 2.5 and 1.5 respectively. This is again a star question. A similar topic question was asked in winter 2021. That is, explain why NADH transferred through glycerol phosphate shuttle generates 1.5. So here, they have asked about the shuttle pathway, but in the first part and in the second part, you have to explain why it generates 1.5. Okay, so this topic was repeated, not the exact question. And not here, the shuttle pathway is asked, only both NADH and APDH both are asked. So let's see how to write the answer to this question. So during oxidative phosphorylation, in case of NADH. Firstly, we will discuss NADH and secondly, FADH2. So, for NADH, 
total protons pump out of inner mitochondrial membrane stem because four protons each are pumped from complex 1 and complex 3 and two protons are pumped from complex 4. So, 4 plus 4 plus 2 that equals to 10. Now, for the synthesis of one ATP, average number of protons that need to enter the FO, F1 particle or complex is 3. Okay, so for synthesis of one ATP, number of protons that need, need to enter in this FO, F1 complex is 3. But for transport of inorganic phosphate to mitochondrial matrix, one hydroxyl ion goes out of the matrix by PI or inorganic phosphate transporter and this hydroxyl ion is equivalent to entry of one proton. Okay, so, so exit of hydroxyl ion outside the matrix is equivalent to entry of one proton. So, we will combine this, we will add this, this three, three proton and this one proton will make up four proton. So, for synthesis of one ATP, total four protons enter into the matrix. Now, how to calculate the PO ratio? PO ratio is nothing but ATP made per oxygen atom reduce. Okay, ATP made per oxygen atom reduce. So, PO ratio for NADH will be 10 by 4, that is 2.5. How this 10? Here. Okay, 4, 4 protons from complex 1 and complex 3 each and 2 protons from complex 4. So, 4 plus 4 plus 2, that is 10. And for synthesis of 1 ATP, how many protons should enter into the matrix? 4. So, 10 by 4, so that is 2.5. So, that is how PO ratio for NADH is 2.5. Now, let us move to FADH2. Now, FADH2, total protons pump out of inner mitochondrial membrane is 6 because this complex 1 is bypass or FADH2 complex 1 is bypass. Leudicine equivalent are directly transferred to FAD to form FADH2 and from FADH2 it goes to coenzyme Q and subsequent electron transport chain. So, this complex 1 is bypass and you know complex 1 4 protons are pumped out. Okay. So, as complex 1 is bypass only 6 protons are pumped out that is 4 from complex 3 and 2 for uh, and 2 from complex 4. Okay. So, total protons pump out of inner mitochondrial membrane is 6. Okay. And we have seen total protons pump in for 1 ATP synthesis is 4 here. Okay. So, synthesis of 1 ATP required 4 proton to enter into the matrix. And similarly, we will calculate the PO ratio for APDH2 which will be 6 by 4 which is equal to 1.5. So, 6 divided by 4, 1.5. Okay, so we have explained how the PO ratio for NADH is 2.5 and FADH2 is 1.5. Okay, so this is enough for two marks. Let's see the next question. Define essential fatty acids and give two examples. State the composition of number one, ganglocytes, number two, slow reacting substance of anaphylaxis. Okay, so it has various components. This question has various components. Let's see the first that is definition of essential fatty acid. So, essential fatty acid means the fatty acid which cannot be synthesized in the body and therefore they should be taken in the diet. So, that these are called as essential fatty acid. What are the example? Linolic acid and linolenic acid. Some books also mention arachidonic acid, but it is not a strictly essential fatty acid because it can be synthesized from linoleic acid. Okay. Now we'll move to the second sub question here: composition of gangliosides and SRS A. Composition of gangliosides, it contains sping sphingosine, fatty acid, oligosaccharide, and a sialic acid, which is called N acetyl neuraminic acid, that is NANA. Okay, so sphingosine plus fatty acid, it is ceramide plus oligosaccharide plus NANA. Okay, so that is the composition of gangliosite. It is mainly present in the ganglion and dendrites, mainly around the gray matter of the brain. Okay. Next, what is the composition of slow reacting substance of anaphylaxis? That is SRS A. It is increased, it is producing produced by mast cell in anaphylaxis, it induces inflammation. 
So it is a mixture of leukotrienes, leukotriene C4, leukotriene D4, and leukotriene E4. Okay, so LTC4, D4, and E4. So the, it is a composition of SRSA. Okay, so definition definition of essential fatty acid, examples, composition of gangliosides, and SRSA. So that that much you have to write for two marks. Next question is name the defective protein and state the clinical features of osteogenesis imperfecta. So it is a very straightforward and easy to answer. Defective protein in osteogenesis imperfecta is collagen. Okay. So in osteogenesis imperfecta, collagen synthesis is affected. That is gene for synthesis of collagen are either completely absent or partially absent. Okay, and then this osteogenesis imperfecta is also called brittle bone disease. So, due to defective collagen synthesis, bones are not synthesized and they are not made properly. Okay, so that is why the other name is brittle bone disease. So, what will be the clinical features? The all soft and pliable or brittle bones. So, due to the brittle bone, patient will have frequent fracture, even minor trauma will lead to fracture. Dwarfism because growth will not be proper due to, due to defective bone synthesis. Now this collagen is also present in the sclera. 50% of the sclera is made up of collagen. So due to defective collagen, blue discoloration of sclera will be there. Hearing loss because tympanic membrane also contain collagen and uh, elastic tissue around the ear that also contains collagen. So there can be hearing loss and poor teeth develop. Okay. So these are the clinical features of osteogenesis imperfecta. Let's see the next question. Define the term isoenzymes. Explain the rise and fall pattern of creatine kinase 2 isoenzyme in myocardial infarction. So again, two sub questions are there. First, we will see the definition of isoenzymes. Isoenzymes are multiple molecular forms of an enzyme which catalyze the same reaction. Okay, so they, they will differ in their kinetic property, electrophoretic mobility, tissue distribution. Okay, so multiple molecular forms of an enzyme which catalyze the same reaction, they are called as isoenzyme. And we have to explain the rise and fall pattern of creatine kinase 2 isoenzyme in myocard infarction. So creatine kinase 2 isoenzyme is also called as CKMB. Okay. So, how the rise and fall pattern of CKMB is there? So, it appears in plasma within 4 to 6 hours following the onset of chest pain. It reaches the peak at about 24 hours and returns to baseline after 48 to 72 hours. Okay, so that much is enough for 2 marks. Okay, you have to, you have to remember the hours here. Okay, appears in 4 to 6 hours, peak at 24 hours and baseline after 48 to 72 hours. Okay. Let's see the next one. Name the containers used for discarding the following biomedical waste. Okay. First one is cotton swabs contaminated with blood. Second, human body parts. Third, use needles. Fourth, syringes without needles. Okay. Now, according to biomedical rules, which is published by Ministry of Environmental, Forest and Climate Change in 2016, these are the containers which should be used for the ask biomedical waste. First one is cotton swabs contaminated with blood. Container is yellow colored non-chlorinated plastic bag. Here, every word is important. You should know the color. And from 2016 guidelines, non-chlorinated word is there, not a chlorinated bag and plastic bag. So yellow colored non-chlorinated plastic bags. Okay. Second is human body part, the same. Yellow colored non-chlorinated plastic bag. Third, use needles. For use needles, you require white color, puncture proof, leak proof, tamper proof container. Okay. Puncture proof, leak proof and tamper proof container. Number four, syringes without needles. For that, container required is red colored non-chlorinated plastic bags or container. So there is plastic bags or container. Okay, so red colored non-chlorinated plastic bags or container. 
okay let's see the next one draw a neat label diagram of cell membrane okay so they, it is a fluid mosaic model of cell membrane so you should draw a diagram like this you should label it properly there must be a peripheral protein integral protein which acts as a transporter as well then there should be a phospholipid bilayer okay polar head and hydrophobic tail should be there you should draw there are uh, different oligoprotein glycolipids okay oligosaccharides glycoprotein glycolipid cholesterol okay so this is how you should draw it uh, it is for two marks so you should draw it a uh, properly and neatly okay state the biomedical importance of number 1 hyaluronic acid number 2 liver glycogen number 3 heparin sulfate number 4 digitalis okay so state for our questions for it is for two marks so half mark is allotted for writing the biomedical importance of each one so first see the biomedical importance of hyaluronic acid so what is the biomedical importance of hyaluronic acid it acts as lubricant in skeletal joints okay it plays a role in permitting cell migration during marcogenesis in embryonic life it also acts as a receptor in plasma membrane and participate in cell adhesion and in cell to cell interaction so it is for half mark so you can just write a one role okay lubricant in skeletal joint that will be you know okay now for what is the role of liver glycogen it maintains the blood glucose in early fasting state okay maintains of blood glucose in early fasting state early fasting state starts from after your dinner and in the night until you take breakfast on the subsequent morning okay so that is called as early fasting state so during this uh, state what is required to maintain the blood glucose level is liver glycogen so glycogenolysis here from the liver is maintaining the blood glucose level third one is heparin sulfate so along with the heparin it regulates cell proliferation differentiation angiogenesis blood coagulation and process of carcinogenesis so it has a variety of role and these roles are in collaboration with heparin so heparin heparin sulfate so regulate cell proliferation differentiation angiogenesis blood coagulation and in carcinogenesis last one is digitalis it is a drug which is obtained from a plant okay and it is used for treatment of congestive heart failure so actually it increases the contractility of the heart so that is why it is used for the treatment of congestive heart failure or congestive cardiac failure that is in treatment of ccf congestive cardiac failure okay let's see the succeeding question name bile salts and state their role in lipid digestion so very easy name the bile salt bile salts are sodium and potassium salts of glycocolate and taurocolate that is sodium glycocolate sodium taurocolate potassium glycocolate or and potassium taurocolate what is the role the role is only, uh, mainly the emulsification okay but you have to explain what is emulsification so these bile salts lower the surface tension of the lipids which causes their dispersion into smaller droplets so due to the surface tension reduction the lipids are dispersed in smaller droplets so due to this what happens more area is exposed for the action of en enzymes okay and this is called as emulsification of lipids so, so, so this is the role of bile salt in lipid digestion so that emulsification should be there in, in your answer emulsification word should be there and we have just explain what is emulsification how it is taking okay so that's all uh, thank you